stands for Synthesized Genetic Organism. Welcome to Sci-Fi Frontier. I'm Dominic, and in this video I'm going to be talking about the movie Scared to Death. So this is a movie I've wanted to see for a very long time because I was always a fan of the design of the creature in this movie, the Singenor. Even so much so that before I even seen this movie, I bought the mask. Uh, a few years ago, uh, no, probably last year or the year before, I'm not quite sure, but they actually had the mask at one of the specialized Halloween stores for $80. And so I bought the mask and the mask is awesome. And from what I understand, the mask is actually made from the original mold that they use to make the mask for the actual creature suit that's in the movie Scared to Death. So it's a really cool looking mask and it's a movie I've always wanted to see. And I uh, finally got to see it a few nights ago because it came, it's on Tubi right now, that free streaming uh, service. And if you haven't checked that out, that actually is very, very good. I highly recommend it. It's got a lot of movies that are kind of hard to find, like a lot of cult movies and B movies and stuff like that. So saw this one on there, had to watch it immediately. So now how I first became aware of uh, Scared to Death is um, a long time ago, probably like the late 80s, the town that I grew up in had this used bookstore that they would sell used paperback novels and stuff and old comics. So I used to always go in there and dig through the old comics. So one day I went in there digging through the old comics and then uh, looked over at the paperbacks and one of the paperbacks was the novelization of this movie or the novel that this movie was based on because I think he based this movie on a novel or a short story I'm not sure which but anyway so there was a paperback and it had this cover on uh, the cover of this v the exact same cover that you see on this VHS tape here so I picked it up and I was just like enthralled and terrified by it at the same time because the artwork was so good but the monster in the painting looked so scary looking and I was thinking like what is this from is this a movie as well and so then found out it was a movie and then always wanted to see the movie, but never could find it anywhere to rent or buy or anywhere else like that. So then uh, years later down the road, probably around like 2003, 2004, uh, the local video stories to always go to and rent movies, they were selling off all their old VHS tapes because they had converted everything over to DVD at that point. And uh, so one of the VHS tapes they had in their discount bin was actually the sequel to this movie, Singenor. Uh, so I bought it because it was like really, really, really cheap. So I bought it, brought it home, watched it. It was like a very bad movie. So I uh, still wanted to see the first one, the Scared to Death film, but still could not find it anywhere to rent, nothing like that. So until a few nights ago, it came on Tubi and finally I watched it. So finally I got to see Scared to Death after all these years wanting to see it and i have to say after finally getting to see it it was a terrible movie <laughs> so um so now i'm going to get into talking about the plot somewhat uh so spoilers if you haven't seen the movie so the whole gist of the movie is uh someone had genetically engineered a creature in their lab and it escaped and then without them realizing it, it had actually survived they thought it was dead but it had survived and had grown into this full-size monster. And then it was leaving the sewers, coming out and killing people. Uh, so everyone, the, the police think it's like an actual serial killer. And uh, so then there's this guy who is like now a novelist and they want to recruit him uh, back into uh, the service. But he does, he used to be a cop, but he doesn't want to be one anymore because he was so good at investigating like serial killers and stuff. So they bring him, they want to bring him back on the force. His buddy wants to bring him back to help him try to solve this case of what all these killings are. So he kind of doesn't want to get involved. But then he gets into a relationship with this woman and then, but she ends up, so he, he kind of starts getting drawn into this investigation. And then the woman he's dating, she ends up getting attacked by the Singenor and put into this weird coma because the monster doesn't outright kill her. So then, uh, anyway, uh, he ends up uh, then realizing that it's not a person, that's a monster uh, that's doing this. And then him and this other girl who was one of the scientists that worked on the team that helped create this thing, they have to go out and then destroy it. So that's the plot of the movie. Now, the thing about this, the best thing about this movie by far is the design of the monster. Like that's where it looks like all the money went. They made sure the suit that the creature it looks fantastic. It looks great. It looks very scary looking. And it would make if 
someone had did like a toy or something like Todd McFarlane did like a toy of this or Hot Toys did a, like some kind of a really detailed action figure of this Sinjinor thing, man, it would look, it would be a cool looking toy or a statue or something because it's a fantastic design. Or I would love to see them do a remake of this actually today. And uh, you wouldn't have to pump millions and millions of dollars into it. Um, like, a, but you could probably do it a very good job of this movie now. Say if you did it for like, I don't know, 60 or 80 million uh, or like the kind of movie they put into like other uh, horror movies, horror franchises nowadays, you could probably do a really good remake of this, I would think. And uh, you wouldn't even have to alter the monster at all because it looks so scary. And it, I think the design absolutely holds up by today's standards. Now, with that being said, every scene with the monster in it is fun to watch. But now, once you're once the monster's off screen, this is where uh, this is where the movie comes to a grinding halt, and you are gonna be checking your watch and or pausing it and seeing how much further you are through the movie. That's what I was doing because the acting is not very good. You don't care really, and you honestly like you're not. I didn't care about the characters. I didn't care about their relationships. Like they're all so badly written and like weird dialogue that they had in this movie. You just, it was just like, uh, you were just waiting. It was like, almost like, like watching porn. Like you don't watch porn for the storyline. That's how it felt like in this movie. Like I'm not watching this for the storyline. I just want to see the monster again because the storyline is not very good and the acting is atrocious in this film. So that's where the movie completely runs out of gas. As soon as the monster's not on screen anymore and not killing anyone anymore, that there is nothing driving this movie. There's no gas in the tank. <laughs> it is like bad. It's really bad. Um, now I realize it was made in the 1980s and I guess the guy that made the movie, he uh, worked in a, a mask factory and used to design, design masks and he always wanted to make his own movie and he did it all on his own. So with that thought in mind, it's actually, man, he, he really did a good job for someone who I guess doesn't know anything about movies, didn't know nothing about filmmaking, just say, I'm gonna make a movie when I've actually done it. I mean, you got to uh, at least tip your hat, tip uh, your hat to someone like that. So now I've seen uh, both of these now, uh, this one scared to death and the other one, the Sinjinor. Now, as far as plots go, uh, I gotta say scared to death has a better plot because the Sinjinor has something in it that makes it so ridiculous and so stupid that it, it just blows your mind. Um, so if you haven't seen the sequel to this one, the Sinjinor, now the thing about these movies are completely disconnected. You, the, the sequel has like nothing to do with this first movie besides the way the monster looks and the name of the monster. So it's almost like its own self-contained film. And, uh, but I'll, I'll probably do a separate video on that one. Uh, if I could ever get to, you know, rewatch it again sometime down the road. But now what I recommend this movie, I don't know. It's kind of hard to say because like it's, it is pretty bad, but the design of the monster and the, and the creature in it is so good. It's probably worth watching just for that if anything, just to see that they've done such a good job on the design of this creature. And it's a very, very frightening looking design. And obviously it was inspired by uh, Alien, H.R. Giger's Alien design. And uh, in some ways, I almost, in some ways I think this design, the Sinjinor is actually more scary looking than the Alien. Because it, it's a little bit more grotesque looking because it's a little bit more human and there's just something about that that's very off-putting. You know, it's just human enough that there's, I don't know, it's almost somewhat relatable, but you can kind of recognize on a human, I don't know, there's something very off-putting about it that uh, is really disturbing, I think. And that makes it a little bit more grotesque than what the alien design is, where the alien doesn't have the, I think the difference is the alien doesn't have eyes. And so you don't know what's going in there, it's going on. It's like almost too much of a mystery. And it's just like basically a mouth where this has like these, like thinking eyes and stuff like that. I think the eyes give it more of a scare factor, uh, but a, a great design and the mask is cool too. And I'd love to have an action figure of this thing. This is one thing I would love to have an action figure. So in a weird way, I'm a fan of these films only because I'm a fan of the design of this creature so much, but it's weird to say that I can be a fan of these films and not really like them at the same time because <laughs> they're not very good movies. Um, so yeah, I would, if, See, it's hard for me to say. I'm kind of on the fence on whether or not you should check out this film. But I would say check it out, but keep in mind, yeah, the acting's going to be bad and the story's not very good. But just check it out 
at least for the monster part of it, because those parts are good. When, when the monster shows up on screen, then that's when the movie hits its stride and uh, really takes off. And the monster is pretty scary looking, and they did a great this job on the design of the creature. So that's everything I got to say in this video. Let me know what you think in the comments section, and I will see you at the next one. Thank you to all of my subscribers, and thank you for watching this video. And if you're new to the channel, like, subscribe, and share. And don't forget to hit the bell icon for notification when new videos are uploaded.